Today I'm going to be making this little goose guy painting and some yellow tulips. And I hope you'll join me. Bring a snack, a project, work on some knitting, or cleaning your house. But this is a paint along that you can just sit around and work on a project. You could even paint this goose along if you wanted to. So I'm going to start mixing these piles of color. Of course, I'm right handed to get my knuckles in the camera right there. My studio assistant has entered the room, and you may hear him in the background. Let's see if I can get these colors. This is a lovely green gold color, which I actually have a green gold color I like in one of those big tubs. But I would rather mix this so it matches everything else I've got going on right here. I've got some Hansa yellow right here. This is a cadmium yellow that is the real cadmium. It's got the poisonous stuff. It's, it's real cadmium. I'm not going to lick this stuff. Even if I get it on my hands, I'm going to wash up right away before I eat, so I'm really not that concerned. And I'm mixing my stuff before I get started. Ooh, this is some raw umber with this Hansa, and I'm liking where that is going right there. So I'm mixing up some general basic colors that I want in this painting, even before I draw it. Because I can. There's no other big reason. There's a little bit of purple left right here, which I think will be really nice with that green that I just mixed, and the dark green sections right here. You've got a palette cam, which I'll stick somewhere. And the studio assistant is currently searching the studio for a place to sit. So you may hear a crash, hopefully no explicatives, with me. Woo, that's a little harder than I thought right there. That, that paint was old. I used some of this. Granted, this color isn't even in there, so I don't know what I'm doing. This palette I haven't used for a little bit, as you can see. I put this plastic stuff all around it, so it's, it's not going to dry out quite as quickly. This blue is all over the place. Maybe I can make this a nice gray. So this, I believe, is kind of an indigo blue. And that's why I squished out this raw umber, because these two together should be making a gray for us. Because I'm going to have some gray, some darker shades of the goose color right there. But if you look at this picture, there's quite a bit of pink reflecting off of the dirt onto the goose belly down there. So it's not even gray underneath the goose. Gray goose. But we're still going to want something besides just solid white for that goose. Or else it gets a little weird. But it's going to be fun. I've got a couple reds here so I can play around. I may not make these tulips this bright pink right here. I'm not sure I'm really liking that. And I really like orange tulips, so we might play around with that. Or yellow. That's what it was. Yellow tulips. Yellow and geese are the colors I associate. Well, geese color is not a color. It's what I associate with my grandma. She had an upstairs bathroom that was so stinking bright white and yellow and goose themed. I don't know where she found all that goose stuff. It was kind of cute. And so yellow. I didn't like yellow for a long time. Anyway, it was so stinking bright, and that window faced east, so you had the brightest freaking light coming in. If you wake up first thing in the morning and go into that bathroom, you were blinded. So that's memory of my grandma. A blinding bathroom with geese and yellow things. I love it. That's a good memory of my grandma. So I guess this painting reminds me of Grandma a little bit. She also tried to do a lot of tulips, but the deer just came around and ate the tulips, ate the heads off all the tulips. So this one's for you, Grandma. Alright. I'm gonna sketch this out. And you're welcome. Yeah! Goop. I'm reusing this canvas. As you can see, it's got some texture on it. I'm going to reuse this canvas that I have gessoed. I don't know how long this will take me. You are more than welcome to use this as a how-to. You're welcome to just listen to my voice for however long this takes, because I don't know how long it's going to take yet, 
to do your own thing as like a timer of this is how long you're going to work on something, just for that long. So use that. That's what paint along with things are for. Just listening as a timer to have someone do art with you. You're more than welcome to paint this image yourself. If you'd like, this is from Pixabay. It's a royalty free image, so you can go ahead and use it yourself if you want. Or search for that one. Search goose and tulips if you did that. And it's actually a crop of a much larger image that has a little house back here and a big field of tulips. I believe there's even a stream down here, but that was so much for this one little painting that I didn't want to mess with that. Alright, I want that texture down there. I'm going to start by sketching it out in charcoal. I don't have a pink background this time. Whatever. I just get my paint wet once in a while. And then, sketching time. Because I'm an art teacher at heart, apparently, I'm just going to talk through this. Although it seems like a lot of paint along with me is, are like vlogs and talking about life and what's going on. So I'm just going to talk about this goose. You notice how this neck of this goose is right down the center of that whole thing? I don't like that. I'm actually going to move them off to the side just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. I put these half marks on here just so my brain doesn't try to overthink where things are. It's amazing how my brain won't even do halvesies. Woo. Can't even translate that. Eh, it will smudge away. Whatever. Now the neck of the goose goes down here. Can't move him over too much or his tail's just going to end up gone. But maybe we can scoot him. Neck is almost also halfway. That's okay with me though. And we can tweak a lot of this as we go. Belly goes way over halfway, so it'll probably touch halfway right here. This is where you can use that whole draw 50 animals book technique. Because you see, goose are act geese are actually made of of spheres. Like that, like kind of like a horse is a sphere. So you got a sphere right there. It's it's partially the anatomy, like the filled out anatomy of a duck oversimplified. And then you got the goose butt back here. And you got a big old leg right here. Nah, yeah, just about right. I love his stubby little stick legs. Stubby little stick legs. It's connecting these two that gives you more of a goose shape. A general blobby cylinder like goose shape. And his little legs are going all the way down. So if I made a mark here, this would be a quarter of the way down. And that's where his tail is landing, which is good. I feel like he could be longer, but that's just where I have his neck way over there. So we'll make sure it still looks like a goose when I'm done. His or her fluffy feathery butt goes down there. I feel like this could be more angled up than a stronger line. And some of this will go away when I start painting, but this is another reason I draw on charcoal. You can erase some of it with a paper towel as you go. Charcoal to draw with is one of the oldest tricks in the book, I believe. Uh, we've got a dirt line in the back. This will be fun texture stuff. And I'm actually going to pay attention to how far up the tulips start. And they start just below halfway. I feel like either this is a huge goose or he's actually standing farther away from those tulips than it looks. Because these tulips feel really short to me in comparison to the goose. Maybe it's just a really big goose because I know they can get really big and nasty. So if they're not, they can get nasty. Not that I've really ever met that many geese, but I don't really get close to them to find out. Little eyeball, and that dot's gonna go away so fast when I start painting over everything else on here. Um, all right, because this is a critter, I'm going to check the line. His neckline, like where it ends up on his tummy, is like down there. So I want to make sure that balance is right. Not actually need these feet farther back. It's weird how ducks and geese balance with their feet so far back. Like, we would topple right over, but we don't have a tail like they do. 
And that's how they help. That's a little better. Oh, I love his little feet. Eh, we'll see what happens. I can take some of this out. Because I also know if I leave too much of the charcoal on there, it may muddy some of my colors. I could use that just to help darken half of this. I also love this angle right here. So there's a lot of angles on this goose. This is almost flat, it goes down, sticks out his feathery butt, and we'll make this up again as we go. It's That's almost higher up than you think. Right there. So again, I'm erasing and poking around. Is this the boring part? Well, this is how to draw a goose. This is how I draw a goose. This may not be the incredibly correct way to draw a goose, but it's one way of doing it. Ooh, ooh, look, check that out. So on a lot of humans, our neck connects under our ears, and there's a jawline and things like this, and we'll actually have part of our head stick out the back this way, but not on this goose. That's what I got wrong right here. I really wanted to put his skull back here, like a human. I need to watch that. Ah, I goop everywhere. And really round that up on the top. So, eh, I think that's a good workable goose that we have going on right there. And I can paint right on top of anything else I put on. I have to that long, sketching around a goose. I love how this is a clump of tulips right here, and a lot of these lines I'm making are just going to go away because I tend to paint all over, and we'll see how this goes. Scrape. Maybe I should stop talking and let you paint. You may hear some of the scraping of this, of course. You might hear the hot water racing through my walls, and it just stopped. Nice and quiet. And traffic. And whatever music I set this to. Like, that's what about paint alongs. Within an hour, however long this takes, and if you take longer, if you draw this thing and take longer, whatever, it's okay. But even if you draw something, anything, it's a nice timer to have of this right now is your art time. Right here. You don't have to do anything else. Set aside this time. I realize when I do art, some of my anxiety is of not being able to focus. That anxiety is about, there's so many things I want to be doing right now. I can successfully ignore dishes for a very long time, unfortunately. But some, there's always those other household things you just tug at you and it makes it harder to focus on things long term. I need to do this art. Like there's nothing else I need to be doing right now but making this video, both for adorable goose reasons and also for you all out there. And I mean it. Like here's here's a time, just chill, paint. If I keep saying that, you're probably gonna like, okay, stop saying that. It's getting annoying. Ooh, that's gonna be fun right there. These have big, wide leaves. I don't know what kind of tulips these are. Let me sketch some of those things in. It's going to get nice and dark under here. And there's ideas floating through my head. It's still show prep season. And farmer's market application season, which always feels scary. I bring a to almost a totally different set of stuff to farmer's markets because you don't really look for canvas art at a farmer's market. Not, not usually. I get it. At least some of the ones around here. So I paint on tote bags and that's something else I hope to film for you all is how I do my tote bags. I've done those into classes. It's a super easy thing. I've got a fabric medium that helps me get the acrylic into the fabric a bit better. All right, this is very pink dirt right here. Ooh, and because this is a textured canvas, huh, I'm not getting into that texture very easily. I may have to use my brushes for now until I get 
enough paint on there that I can use my texture on top of that. But this is really pink dirt. I kind of like it. Oh, I have another tool I can show you. I haven't used it nearly as much as I need to. It's this little guy. This is a viewfinder. And I'll probably explain it more in a different video. What I use it for right now is isolating a color. If you can see just the color that peeks through that, you get a neutral window and you don't see the colors around it to show exactly what it looks like. So that's a pretty bright little grain. Maybe you can see that. It's for color isolating because sometimes I have trouble isolating a color from things that are around it, especially with oranges and purples. I don't know what it is. With oranges and purples, they, they kind of blend together a little bit for me. Whatever. Ooh, yeah, I like that. I have to keep this blue hydrated with water. I might try palette spray sometime. I believe it's got more of an acrylic medium in it so you don't water down your acrylics too much and break the binder that way. Because too much water can break down your acrylics, supposedly. Uh, there are different thoughts on that, on does it really or does it just evaporate? So I haven't tried it yet to find out myself, and that's something I should do. I'm going to run the edges of this thing. Probably see my big head in the way. I can do the edges on this little guy later. Even though I pre-mix some of this, you can tell, whoops, some of this I still dab around a bit. All right, get my palette cam back on just for some fun part. Finding those and syncing them up again will be fun, but that's okay. That's okay, I tell myself again and again, soothing myself as if I have to be Bob Ross at the same time. I need to try Bob Ross tutorial. I never have. But I guess there's a Bob Ross museum in Indiana that needs to be seen. Whether it's going to be open easily right now or not, I don't know. We'll find out. Now, I don't really like all the style of the Bob Ross videos that he made on television. Not all my style, I guess, but it's what he did for the art community, which is amazing. And getting everyone into art and not be afraid of it. And that's something I also really love to do with adults and classes of playing. Just be, don't be afraid to play. You can fix so much of what you're doing and turn it into a style or trees or mud or clouds. Just play around. It's okay. And that's one reason I love doing classes with adults. Like collages and messy fun work like that. It's fun to see you all just loosen up and have fun and realize it's okay to make a mess once in a while because we can make things out of it. Now with all that, I'm getting ideas for art classes that can be either mailed or picked up. I don't want to say too much about it right now because I know myself and ideas and it will break the whole thing if I tell you too much too soon. So I can't. But I'm doing lots of research. In fact, I did so much research on this new idea that I didn't film this video yesterday. Like I wanted to, because I can bite off more than I chew and edit way too much that I have time for right now. It's fun to edit. My animation degree, I feel tiny, a little two-year animation degree, I feel like it still helps me figure out some editing and help me navigate time-based blah 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 I enjoy it whatever it is stick some colors under here I'm gonna paint all of my arms this is normal for me I'm 12 now oh, probably 12 year olds out there that paint cleaner than I do I'm not gonna knock on 12 year olds because I remember how hard it was to be one and I think it's probably harder now do 12 on the inside or out Woo! I don't know, any 12 year olds out here watching this? Shout out to you guys. It's hard. Yay, dirt. I'm gonna go back in there and do some other darker dirt on that side a little bit, but I'm trying to get some of this 
dark stuff in here so I can do white stuff on top. Fancy how that works. Oh, this blue is everywhere. So I'm actually going to make that a bit darker. It's a very, this blue kind of over dried quite a little bit. I probably can mix the medium in that and fix it, but I don't want to right now, so I won't. So there. How am I doing? I'm doing dirt down here and I need it a bit lighter pink because this dirt is pink. Cool. I have some reds going on here. I'll just cover up the wrong dirt. That works, that's fine. Guess that works then. That might be good for palette knife at the bottom though. Very pink dirt. And since we're on that pinkish color, ooh, it's gonna be really light on that goose. Really, really light. That's the other thing nice about this, it's a 50% gray, just like my palette right here. So not only is it neutral for colors, it's neutral for value as well. Look at that interesting color. And eh, I hope to not have to use that all the time, but it's a great tool checker for all sorts of things. You can also take a picture with your phone of the scene or whatever you're doing and try a black and white filter. That is also wonderful for checking the values, especially in plain air. I think I've mentioned that before, but eh, I mentioned it again because I can. And I'm talking this whole time. Do I have to talk this whole time? Can you even hear me if I whisper? Whatever. You're here and you're painting along with me. And it's also my first paint along video. I don't know how to do these yet. I haven't even made 100 videos yet on my channel. And they say, they, more successful YouTubers, honestly, that's who they is in this case. Like, just make 100. Make 100 crappy ones. I really hope this is not one of the crappy ones, but I know I'll be able to do better in a couple years. So thank you all for helping me out and helping me figure out these early videos, what I can provide for you, what I can make consistently for me, and sticking around and just painting with me with these little geese, these adorable goose. Butt angle, butt angle on a goose. What do people talk about? You know, I should know because I've watched quite a few of these paint along type videos. I feel like that goose could be larger too, and we can fix that as we go. Probably need to go over some of these lines. There we go. Big ol' buddy. And give him a pink belly under there. I'll probably come back to some of that. I watch some of them, keep them on as vlogs, and I think there's something about people talking and you zone out if they're calm talkers, just going on about art business and art day, and pretty soon you've zoned out and you're painting, and it's quite possible no one's listening to me right now. You're enjoying your painting, whatever you're doing. I love it. Thank you for joining me and letting me just put you in that zen mood of painting. If that's all it is right there, that's great. Before I had internet in my apartment, I would buy those value packs of like B-movie action DVDs, like eight for five dollars, because I was lonely. I wanted some voice. I didn't have internet, and then, I mean, I had CDs. I'm, I'm <clears throat> a vet old. <clears throat> but, you know, you get tired of the same CDs sometimes, and you want something a little different, or voices. You want talking voices sometimes. It's, I don't want to say it's sad, because a lot of people do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You want something in the background to keep you company. And sometimes, an actual person there talking wants a different kind of attention from you. So having something like this, or a podcast, where you can ignore it and no one's gonna be offended if you have to get up and pee or go get your coffee or whatever. That's okay. We're here to hang out, kind of like an open studio class. Just hang out, leave if you have to. That would be fun, open studio class stuff again. 
All right. Ooh, I'm liking that little goose. I feel like he needs to come down more right there. Again, I'll want to tweak this so much after I'm done with it. And I want some light coming through underneath his butt because geese are round. This is where geese are a sphere. Seriously. On a sphere, you've got some light coming around the edges because it's a round thing. So we can actually get some other light coming through. This is reflected light off of whatever this dirt stuff is. That's, I'm, I might be making this up as I go along, but I believe that's what we're seeing. So we've got some dirt colored reflected light on the goose bottom, like a boat, which is literally what they are. And then we've got some light, you can barely see that peeking around the outside of that goose because they are round boats. Round cylinder geesey things. I might have to come back to that afterwards anyway with the way this dirt is, and it might be too wet. What are we, time I'm working on now. Alright. Ooh, I like it. Brighter. Brighter right around in there. Now, you see how I mix the paint with my brush? And all the paint's in the belly of the brush right there, that's where it is. I've used up the stuff on the tip. Sometimes I'll scrape it on the edge of my palette, but that's all messy. Scrape palette, brush, whatever you got. Get my painting knife. I'm scraping that on the edge like that, and I'm getting it out of the body, belly of the brush. So I can pick it up again right there. Yeah, that's why you don't mix with your brush, especially bristle brushes, and it's getting the furrow, and it's all... I'm ruining everything by mixing with my brush, and I don't care. Sometimes you have to buy materials to know what you use. That's the nice thing about art school. The nice and bad thing about art school is they make you buy so much of everything. And you learn what you don't like to use. I think there should be art swaps after like three years off of school. What do you decide you don't like to use? I kept everything. Because that's expensive art materials. It's fun. I'm learning I need to paint with cheap brushes because I torture them on purpose. Absolutely on purpose. Alright. Now we've got some green stuff going back here. Yeah, just mush that around a little bit. I want you can kind of see this on the photograph. It's blurry back here and it'll be sharper in front. It's partially also because I took a detail of a larger picture, so it's already a little pixelated. And that's fine for this, because you're not copying it exactly. You make stuff up as you go, and I'm talking about me. Me, you, us, we're making stuff up as we go. And so you want it also kind of blurry, because that's not the important part in the background. The important part is this adorable little goose. And some of the tulips, which he may or may not eat. Although I think he might be after the slugs that are terrorizing the tulips instead. I'm also going to whip out my old toothbrush for this part, because that's one of my favorite technique things. I probably got totally off subject from brushes and torturing stuff. I'm going to make it lighter in the background. And if you squint at this picture, which might be hard to do, it's... Sh the tulips in the far background should blend in to their their greenery back there. And I'm going to change that up really good too so it's not all green. It should blend in more, at least. The other tricky thing is, if you have any red-green blindness, those tulips completely disappear. And so that's another reason why it's so important to punch up your values, to be very careful of your values. I don't know why I'm more conscious of people that might have red-green blindness, and it's usually men. And right now, anyway, a lot of my customers actually tend to be women. But of course, you dudes out there can totally shop for women, or other dudes, or you know what I mean. But that's science of why guys tend to have more red-green blindness. But I believe there is something to that when it comes to values, too values of anything that you want to see. Just learn how to control it. Alright, I'm locking that right now. 
I want to get more brush strokes in there, and I want to do the top, or else it's going to be weird trying to do the top after all of this other stuff. I also know I need to spray my palette, or I'll be in trouble. Yeah. I have some palette cam going on here, a little bit, right with my big knuckles right in the thing right there. Whee! Just get it on there! I'm not as worried about this as you can tell. Just get that paint on there. This poor brush it's all scraped up. I don't even know what the brush was like when it was brand new anymore. Probably a cheap pick. This was from Artist Loft. This is from Michael's. Not sponsored. I sponsor my own stuff right now. Edges go all the way around the edges. Now these edges I painted over from black because at one point I painted the edges of my paintings black. For lots of reasons. There's actually a lot of square inch painting if you do the edges, especially on these chunky little ones, which can really amp up your time. But if you kind of mush it around like this, I think it just looks better in general. It looks like a bigger painting on the wall if you go around the outsides. and. There's all sorts of reasons. Uh, also because how do you know if the edge is going to match someone's living room? So that's why I don't do colors necessarily. I could be making all this stuff up. Some people might agree. If you paint the edges of your paintings a solid color or not go over it, why do you do that? And what color do you usually choose? Do you choose something to go with the painting? Something neutral so it will stick out of someone's like living room wall. I used to try to do gold frames as well and then I had a show on a yellow wall. A yellow kitchen wall. It, you know, community center kind of yellow wall. That's why it was in a kitchen. Giant kitchen. Gold frames, warm gold that I like, and bright yellow do not mix. There's probably all sorts of color theory reasons for why they don't mix, but it was bad. And so what? I had toured this kitchen before I put the show up, and I decided right there I was spray painting all my frames black. I like gold and metallics and things like that to really give a different dimension to paintings. Yeah, I think it helps. I, I like the originals with texture, darn it. It's another reason I tend not to varnish my paintings so you get different textures in here. And we'll see what this little guy gets. But after I saw the yellow wall, what all black. That's a good solid neutral. It pops out of a lot of things. And if you really want another color, if I make the frame for you, hey, just ask. It's spray paint. Come on, let's get real. It's spray paint. You can have whatever color spray paint you want. You can spray paint it yourself. It's spray paint. Have something that matches if you want, or just mix it up and, you know, house paint. Those are the frames I make anyway. Yeah. Alright, let's, ooh, I like the purples and greens going on right here. I'm going to go around some of the edges right over here. Oh, well, that works. Whoops. Don't need that. We just mush on that green, and yeah, I'm totally going to be putting some thick red glops on top of here because getting red to glaze well in acrylics, I find that a little tricky right now. Maybe years from now I'll figure out the how, but it tends to get chalky real fast if you glaze red over, well, especially green. Especially green because that's its natural nemesis. It's a compliment. Complementary color where opposites attract and clash and scream and shout at each other and you can use it very nicely to make other colors pop out. But going on top of each other, those colors tend to turn to mud. Like this. That mud right there. This mud happens to be very pink and purple. I might add more purple to that mud because I can. That's very purple right there. I don't want that that purple. Back and forth, back and forth, mixing with my brush like I'm not supposed to. Purples, got some blues in the shadows. 
add some purples under the goose butt. And I, I really want this sharp angle right here. Which means his tail needs to end right up there. Suddenly it's a boy goose. He knows what he wants. And get some more shadows into that other wet paint. That works. Yeah. Might be time to switch brush for a little bit. I may have cat fur in my mouth. Thank you, studio assistant. All right, spray palette. Do I attempt palette wetting spray? Another thing out there, have you all used palette wetting spray and how do you like it? Why did you get it? What would you recommend? I want to know everything. It's also 15 bucks around where I am and I don't want to shell out for that, although I'm sure it will work. Absolutely, it will work to wet the palette of acrylics, but is it worth it? All right, I'm thinking this go gooseneck right here is actually a little purple, kind of a bluish purple right there because this is backlit with the sunrise coming that way. Not too much of a shadow of the goose down here though. That's almost a light purple. Let's see what we've got right here. Me. It would help if I mushed it with the right side of the brush, I guess. This is a light ultramarine, a bit of dioxanine purple. Um, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Lighter and redder. Lighter and redder. Was that the right purple? Don't know. I don't know. We're going to try it though. Pinkish red. That's probably a bit too much, but yeah, no. Poor brush. Backlit. I tend to like to paint backlit things with the glowing edges. Purple. Kind of a blue thing right there, but not as blue as this little guy right here. Eee. I want light. Swishing. Violent swishing, especially with these bristles. That's for sure. Can I get any lighter of a blue to come around this outside right here? Because it is still localized white duck right here. Around the edges. And we'll see how that goes. Honestly, this charcoal edge needs to go away. Because I need to have a light outline, not a dark one. So, layers. I'll learn to do layers. But I'm tapping along there, ignoring that tulip right there because that will trip you up if you anticipate edges like that little tulip. That is my neat on a cardboard box. Nothing has exploded. Pink, pink, pink. Way too pink. Fine. That will teach you. Take that. I can go over his little, little goosey bill soon too. Oh, fine. Didn't squish out enough. This needs more green on top because I don't know that I don't like what that just did to my goose. He's got a flat head right back here. We got ooh, we got little little cheeks, kind of. Is that a cheek on a goose? It's actually thicker right here where his little neck muscle is pulling his head to the side. So this narrows down. This goes down a little farther, and I'm just showing what's on here. That's better. Goose, that needs to lighten up with some pink stuff, which is drying out. That pink, that red wants to try to dry. I don't know about that. And I feel like the rest of the goose is actually a lot lighter and we'll get there. This is where I'm doing the mistake of mixing a dark into a light into a dark. I'm going backwards to what I tell all my students and everybody. Here we go. Pink goose in front. Kind of a shimmery goose, but you can tell he's still white compared to everything else going around there. Until that's a white goose. Maybe. You might need to get some blue going on here to dull down what we've got with this pink going on. Bit pink. Eh, I'll come back to that. 
That's bugging me now. I probably did too much. Take that. Take that, you darn thing. It's bugging me. Oh, that had orange in it. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll leave that alone for now. I can't leave it alone! I must fix. I must fix the goose. What did I do? Probably tried to fix it. That's what that will teach me. And right there. I think his neck got too pink is partially what happened. And that threw a lot of things off. And we also need to give him his little goose cheek things. That's going to help a lot right there. And this little guy is actually looking up a bit more than we want. Because, but that's just that's just a face of the goose, and he can be looking up. I'm okay with that. Now, also notice on this, this green is a lot darker. If you squint, there's a much darker green going on back here. Squinting is an amazingly useful tool in artistry that a lot of people don't mention. What they don't teach you in schools, squint. They probably do teach you in schools, honestly. Squint, use red filters, buys the expensive things. That works. Or just squint. There we go. That will help. This bristle brush is getting soft from getting all that wet, so it's about time to retire this brush for now. Yeah, I'm liking that little goosey guy. I gotta stop poking at him and we'll be fine. Is it time for this one yet? I also have this little one which doesn't have a bristle brush. Let's scrape some of these away. That would get all messy. That's how I do it. I was gonna make yellow tulips for this little guy, so we're going to go with this, and I am going to start with some white and a tiny little bit of red for the orange tulips, because that's going to strengthen the color, I think, a little bit. Can I just blob these on? Scrape, 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 scrape. Yeah. Kind of. Get it onto the edge of the palette knife, like that. That's the nice thing about tulips, there's these wonderful little eggy shaped things. They're very simple flowers if you want them to be. And then there's the double, double tulips and the Rembrandt tulips and the peony shaped tulips and it's cool. There's a lot of them on purpose. The other thing I like about tulips is that they're all planted right now. Most of them for in the fall. They're all planted and all out there already. And that's kind of fun to think about. They're all just waiting for the time to come. So all those tulip shows where you go out to gardens and things and you see the tulips, they're there right now. That's a lot to plan ahead for and counting on exactly when they're going to come up. So that's kind of cool. They're unique like that. I want to make more tulipy things where you see the underneath part and the bulb portion of things. Yay! As you can tell, I am totally paying attention to the anatomy of a tulip and totally rendering out all of these details. I'm not just blobbing on this paint at all where I think tulips should be. Definitely not. Absolutely not. This is the professional art technique of finally rendering with a two hair brush. I don't know. Sometimes I, I use the... Oh, what is that stuff called? There's a retarder. It's a slow dry stuff. That I can blend with. I tend not to blend too much when it comes to actual acrylic painting though. Alright, this is blending in nicely back here with that value. We want the ones in the front to pop out a little bit. I don't know what is on here, but how I got this blue onto my 
Oh, paper, but it's getting everywhere. This is hands-on painting, or elbows-on painting. Something else I haven't tried quite yet. But there is enough variation in each one of these tulips. I do want to catch a little bit of that because it's more realistic painting, especially underneath. So on some of these, I'm not rendering these out, but I will try to give them a little bit of dimension as we go. That is my chair creaking. Good old-fashioned plastic creak. Not my back this time. That would be terrifying. Blobs on the side. I like how there's a group of tulips right here going on and not over there. So I'm going to get rid of that with some green. Good old back and forth acrylic. And dark green at that because we want the light green to come forth as these right there. Light er green goes from dark to light, and that's something I want to try to keep a little bit of, even if I'm not blending everything. There's a few things that are going to just pop out. You don't have to do the entire details. Your eyes and your brain can make up a lot of these. So if you render out or add details only to a few of these, your brain will fill in a lot of the rest especially for this style of painting. You notice down here it's a lot brighter and my ADHD brain decided we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna, we're gonna stop with the tulips and suddenly put this in. This is why those classes take so long because I have to edit my ADHD brain from going all over the place and try to do things step by step. As you can tell right here it goes back and forth. It doesn't always work like that. All right feet. We'll be back for you. Don't worry, we'll dig you out later. Just need some dirt in there. Scrape. Picks up that wonderful texture. That's another reason I used a textured canvas, because you can get some of that dirt texture in there. I'm not making that up this time. Scrape. There we go. And scrape dirt down there. Oh yeah, I like that. Very orange little orange feet, are they? Red orange, yellow, yeah, red orange. I might actually mix that with my palette knife this time real quick. Just like his beak, very red orange stuff going on. So, this guy's gonna be pointed upwards a little bit, so that's a very dark bottom beak. And then, there's his feet. This is the part where we're just gonna chill and paint. And those are really thick legs on that goose. I can come back in with a little bit of stuff. Fix that. And the top beak, beak portion. Oh yeah, he's adorable. They're so cute and so vicious. Like some bears and tigers. Like me cute, pretty, maybe, maybe not cute. Some children, I guess. Cats, dogs. I could just go on and list all the animals that are cute and vicious at the same time. Animals and people. Ah. I don't like how that dirt just kind of... You can have tiny legs. You need tiny little goose eggs. You can exaggerate that part of it. There. One of them is a little bit lighter. I can exaggerate that part and I'm not mad. What we can do with, since it's lighter is add some other dirt back, which meh, it's cute. I do want to punch up some of it a little bit. It feels off, and I might figure out why soon. I need a little bit more red under there. This part is both lighter. Where is it? Where did we go wrong? Honestly, I probably didn't go that far wrong from what I want. It's just not done yet. 
Well, I've noticed, and there's proverbs about all sorts of stuff, it's so true how beginners have barely even tried as many times as a master has failed. I'm not calling myself a master painter by any means, but I've noticed my when I do have classes, two hours later a student might have something that looks like a beginning of my painting. Hey, I've practiced a lot more, I need to practice a lot more drawing, but you end up with something that, yeah, it's a beginning, it's a good start, and it feels frustrating to only have a start at that point, but that's somehow how the process goes. And I'm learning to stick with those things of my own that feel ugly and keep pushing through because I feel like I did it all wrong. But no, you just have to keep going. Sometimes there are things you can't fix and you made the bones weird or all that, but most of the time it's just a good, good beginning. Is that charcoal I put there or is that part of the goose? That charcoal. That's where you get Shapes of the Goose. Now that sounds like a good book of poetry. The Shape of the Goose. Or like an indie film. Shape of the Goose. What would it be about? I don't want to know. There, swish, swish. Scrape. Goose butt. Goose butt surgery right here. And this leg is in front, so I actually need to see a little bit of that amazingly sexy goose leg coming out on top, and that's going to go over on the back. That's the technical term. The thing is in front of the other thing. Like that. As so, paint is all over the hands. I definitely need to wash my hands after this. I'm liking how that's going. The other thing with these yellow tulips is that they are very light in comparison. If you squint here, these tulips, they disappear into the background. So you've got that contrast with the goose still. And that's one reason it works so well. But with this one, these yellow tulips are so bright still, you don't have that wonderful contrast. Hey, it's an o'clock. That was my watch and other things in the background. A little orangey for some stuff. I want some of these to blend. Cover up the blobs back there. Oh yeah, that's blending well. Probably more yellowy. This is a, there we go. Blend as I go. Get rid of that contrast in the background. We want it to pop out the goose's head just right, but we don't want that contrast to show up. So I'm liking, if I squint at this, I like how this goes into the background. These are still a little bit bright for what I'm thinking. But it's also yellow tulips. Eh, it's all good. It's another reason I paint in the Impressionist style, because it's kind of meant to be squinted at anyway. This is the essence of goose. Essence of goose and tulip. impression of the goose and tulip. Probably a goose chomp. But as long as you know they're tulips in a way, I'm good. Probably not daisies when, with this kind of shape on them. So that's, that's perfectly fine. That's what I'm going for. Colors. Kind of add more oranges in there and that will help pull out the beak and other things. So Add a little more orange, and I'm trying to load this poor yellow. There we go. Talking. Like that. That's a bit contrasty right there, but that's okay. Contrasty. Also a highly technical term, which I'm not sure is used in the whole fancy academic world of art. I need to spray my palette again or I might be in trouble. There we go. And the more I do this, the more we're going to get into the 
quiet, contemplative painting. Now here's something I just I just noticed that I'll pick up on. This ground line ends over here, this ground line is higher. I need to fix that, it should be all one, and you actually notice more under the goose butt that way. But since I scooted the goose over a little bit, not only is it a squatter body that I need to fix up, but he actually covers some of that over there. So I'm making kind of a dark orangey brown, and I realized I lost track of my time with that last recording. I'm getting better at that. Ha! Huh? You didn't miss much. I was just rambling on about art and colors, and I'm rambling this whole time, so it really doesn't matter anyway. But I'm making an orangey brown to be the darker bit of these yellow tulips. You can get references of yellow tulips. That's easy. I probably will if I do a more rendered drawing of tulips, absolutely. I also want to get some texture in here, but I feel like if I do the spray texture anywhere around this top part, it will actually be too dense of details. And i that's the tricky part. I kind of want it mushed in there, but I don't want dense details because that's another form of contrast, especially when you're painting over a photograph or something like that. Contrast, details, color all together. But I'm also losing some of my darkness right here. There we go. If I can just get some of these tulips to really look like tulips, I will be a happy camper. Not all of them. I don't want all of them to. This blue, I tell you, it's getting everywhere. I'm going to wash up after this anyway, so it's all good. But it feels sticky on my arm. It's acrylic. I'll be fine. I don't have to wash and bathe in turpentine to get it off. So, oh, that's where my hands on still. I want a little bit of this. So some of these greens might end up being darker than they would normally be here because of trying to make those yellow slopes pop out. I'm liking it. I think he's almost done, honestly. Because after recording those bits, I realize how long we've been painting. And if you do too much to these little guys, you know, it kind of ruins it after a while if I keep poking, keep poking at that goose. So, I'm going to give him a little splash here and there of some bright stuff. I'm going to give some of these tulips a little bit of a highlighted edge. Whee! We've got some stems going on like that. Eh, it's enough to see that it's stems, I think. brushed up leaves here and there, and they're pointing towards the goose, so they're all going around a little bit. And last but not least, the eye of the goose. Very careful detail work. Boop. I love it. I like it right there. I could probably be tweaking this thing for hours, but I want to get going, and having that timeline of just paint along gives you a time to stop and like, no, it's good, it's fine, it's gonna be fine. If I keep poking at it like I'm doing right now, I'm gonna ruin it all over again. And if you do want to poke, if you do want to come back to a painting, give it a break first. Seriously, give it a break, maybe even three days, and you're gonna see stuff other than trying to poke things with tired eyes that have been working at it, you know, eight inches away here this whole time. So if you do want to poke again at whatever you're painting, come back to it later. Seriously, take a break. And you're much less likely to ruin all the work that you've already done with so many of those things. That is my final warning shot at you. And I learned that from experience is to just give it a break. And it's fine. So there's my little goose guy for right now. And I'm going to call this one good because I think he's really adorable. 
and I hope you all had fun painting. If you made it this far, liking and subscribing helps my small business. I'm not going to even do that anymore because everyone hates saying that. So forget I said anything about all of that, but enjoy your tulips. Enjoy your duck, your duck goose things. Big old buddy right here. I need more. I just want to keep poking at this thing. So I'm going to stop that right now. I'm going to stop poking at him. It's so I can't stop painting. That's what needed right there. All right, I gotta stop.